don't understand you. Last night you told me you were afraid and you wanted me to help you. I said the only way I could help you was if you followed my orders. And now you're up and disobeying them again. I've been doing a lot of thinking since then about what you told me. What I told you was to stay in bed. No, I mean about what's wrong with me. What's wrong with Lisa may be wrong with me. We can't be sure at this point. But her medical history with us was pretty similar to what happened to you. Mm -hmm. She began to have attacks which we diagnosed as breachments. Once they start, they come and go. How often? There doesn't seem to be any set pattern. But you have to stay here for observation. To be poked and examined and x-rayed? I'm sorry, that just happens to be the way we do it here in Port Charles. Now, where you come from, maybe they use a magic wand. We don't happen to be that advanced yet. There's no reason why I have to be a resident of the hospital to be examined, though, is there? If I live nearby, got an apartment close to the hospital, say, I could be an outpatient and be treated here. You could. Well, then let me. I saw for rent sign in the apartment building across the street. I could get a place there. If I did, would that be close enough to suit you? I'd rather have you here. But if I felt bad, I could come running. And I would. I'm not very brave about being sick. <laughs> not one of those people who try to think it away. I have absolutely no faith in the power of mind over matter. Well, that's something to be grateful for. You're hard enough to handle as it is. I promise. At the first sign of trouble, I'd be over here in a flash. Of course, I'd be very pleased if you drop in and see me sometimes when I'm not ill. I'd like us to be friends, not just doctor-patient. I don't think that's a very good idea, Lana. I know, but you're wavering, I can tell. Please, let me convince you. I'd be much happier that way. You don't want a depressed patient on your hands, do you? I'd like to have an obedient one for a change. I'd do everything you said. Take all the medicine you prescribe, show up for every test, make every appointment. But don't make me stay here 24 hours. My frame of mind is important too, isn't it? All right, all right. I have nothing but doubts, but if you feel that strongly about it, I won't argue. Thank you. But if anything happens to you and you get seriously ill again, you'll have to move right back in here. I'm not going to try and treat you from across the street. It's a deal. You may have won this battle, but you're in danger of losing the war. And I want your address and phone number the minute you get that apartment. You'll have it, don't worry. I'll be talking to you very soon. And thank you for being so nice. Mm. Thanks so much for everything. Goodbye and amen. How come you're releasing her so soon? Because there's no way to keep her here. Short from chaining her to the bed, she wants to be on her own. Was that safe? I just think it's unavoidable. But she promised to get an apartment close by and keep in close contact, so it's not as bad as it was with Lisa. At least she understands the situation and is willing to cooperate with us. Okay. Well, you're the doctor. Um, to yeah. Listen, I'd like to set up a whole series of tests uh, as soon as we can, though. Mm-hmm. Did she ever uh, write that note for you? What note? I don't know. She, uh, she asked me for some paper last night. She said she wanted to write you a note in case she was asleep when you got back. No, she certainly wasn't asleep. She was up and getting ready to walk out of here. I had to do some kind of talking to get her to spend the night. What time did you get back? About 8 o'clock. It's, it's odd. Um, I don't know, maybe she tore it up. There's something very puzzling about her. In what way? I don't know. It's just that last night, she was different. She was, um, she was timid, gentle. I, I don't know, I, I just, I guess I just don't understand the girl.
anything, Sylvia? It's nothing that won't keep. Sit down. Thanks. I haven't been just working. Uh, I've been thinking, too, about you, oddly enough. Well, it's not odd to me. What kind of things have you been thinking about? Oh, nice things, mostly. Uh -huh. I was remembering our meeting yesterday and thinking how glad I am that you've decided I'm not a driving, compulsive woman trying to build a future on her husband's grave. Uh, I didn't think you cared what I thought about you. Or what anybody thought, for that matter. Oh, that's not strictly true. I've trained myself not to let it affect me, but down deep I care very much. Particularly for your good opinion. Though I'm not sure why that's so important to me. Don't worry about it. You have it, Katie. I understand now you're trying to give your husband the will to live through his work. And I see you in a much kinder light. And that if it might interest you, I just happen to have left the young lady who helped me to arrive at that particular insight. Did you? Who's that? Oh, she's one of the staff nurses. I mean, she just said it in passing. It wasn't in direct relation to your husband, but uh, the truth of it really hit me. So, if it helps, just want to say I'm genuinely sorry that I misunderstood your motives. It's all right. People generally misunderstand me. Mm. As long as it's straightened out between us, I can cope with the rest of them. I just don't want us to be bad friends, Mark. Well, we won't. I mean, I hope not, anyway. Uh, there is something else I have to talk to you about, and, uh, I don't think you're gonna like it so much. Uh, go ahead, I've got my teeth clenched. Well, you asked me to help you with what you're doing, to allow him to work so he can feel useful. Yes. Well, Katie, I thought a lot about it, and, uh, the answer is no. I can't. Why not? You admit yourself that it's good for him. No, I didn't admit that. Mm -hmm. You believe in it, and it's changed my perspective about you, but I can't feel any change medically about his case. You mean I have to try and convince you all over again? The thing is, I can't be convinced, Katie. I can't get in a partnership with you on mumbo-jumbo. I'm a doctor. I'm involved in medicine. I'm not a, a witch doctor or a science of the mindest. Is it really mumbo-jumbo? I don't think I've asked you to compromise your ethics or demean your profession. It's no more than what you did for yourself, isn't it? After the trouble with your wife. Found something else to live for. I know it's what I did. I told you our lives have run a parallel course, and it's true. Look how much you and I have accomplished by sheer force of will. All right, fine, that's us, but it's going to take a lot more than that to help your husband. Unfortunately, he does not have a mental problem. He's got a physical problem, a medical one. It's going to take accepted medical resources to help it. I thought most doctors were wise enough to admit that there's a power outside themselves. Oh, I mean, there are any number of powers outside of me but I only refer to them when I've exhausted my resources, and I haven't exhausted my resources with your husband. Besides, as far as our personal relationships are concerned, it um, doesn't apply. As a matter of fact, it almost complicates matters. I don't see how. I'll tell you. You dropped a very difficult medical problem in my lap, and introducing personal relationships just makes it worse. Gee, thanks. Well, it's true. Well, it's not very gallant, but it's true. What we're dealing with is physical attrition. Your husband's getting weaker every day. Now, you really don't want me to lie to him about it, do you? I don't think I've asked you to do that. You're asking me indirectly, Katie. And I can't do it, and it's better you know that right now. There's no need to lie to me, Dr. Dante. Lamont. I know exactly what my wife is doing. I've known all along. I love her for it, but I've not been deceived by it. I'm you... sorry, Catherine. I didn't mean to eavesdrop, but your voices were carrying. I thought you were going to stay in bed. I know, but I got restless. Anyway, as long as we all now understand each other, perhaps we can get down to some straight talk for a change. Well, fine. 
I think it's high time we did. I think we'll both be better off for it, Mr. Corbett. Hello. Oh, just a moment, please. Well, uh, we'll have a schedule out there. No, that's all right. No, look, tell them I'll be there. Okay. I'm sorry, I have to go to OR. Well, in that case, I guess the straight talk will have to wait. But let's not let it wait too long. Don't worry, Mr. Corbin. I'm just as anxious to get it out in the open as you are. <laughs> for that towel. Come in. Hello. Well, the bride and bridegroom cover. <laughs> Welcome home, kid. Thank you. I wish I could say that it's great to be back, but it isn't. I'd rather still be up in that cabin. Yeah, well, that doesn't surprise me a bit. Couldn't you have arranged to take another day? Well, we could have, but it would have been so difficult. We finally gave in and decided to come home. Well, did you have a good time the time you had? Oh. It was heaven. It was really and truly heaven. And we came to return your keys and give you our profound thanks. Uh, yes, and uh, we left it in as good a shape as we could, all tidied up and everything. Uh, you didn't have to do that, but thank you. Oh, uh, no, thank you. Well, you're welcome. Um, do I get to kiss the bride? Hmm? Heavens, yes. I haven't been kissed in at least ten minutes. Hey, well, it seemed like a golden opportunity. I didn't want to miss a I turn. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for everything. Hey, you're welcome for whatever. I'm just glad you finally went off and did it. Yeah. Hey, congratulations to you two, old man. Uh, thank you very much, Peter. I think I deserve them. After all, we squeezed the wedding in between an appendectomy and open-heart <sighs> surgery, which I think is a medical first. Yeah, it certainly sounds like one to me. <laughs> yeah, now it's back to work. We haven't even checked in yet. Uh, yeah, I'd like to have a little breakfast before we do, huh? Okay, you want to make a fast stop at the cafeteria? What do you say? You've got it. <laughs> Would you join us? Oh, I'd like to, but uh, I've, I'd got to see a patient in a little while. Diane and I'd like to have you over to dinner, though, as soon as we can. Um, maybe after we get back from our trip. Huh? That sounds terrific Please. to me. You have my lipstick on you. Oh. Just a second there. Thank you. Were there any exciting things happen, any emergencies while we were gone? Uh, nothing in particular, but you were only gone overnight. Huh? Oh. Really? Is that all? <laughs> Seems like a lot longer somehow. <laughs> Anyway, um, how are you doing? You getting ready for your vacation? Yeah, we're looking forward to it. Which reminds me, uh, something kind of odd did happen. What? Diane and I got a very strange telegram last night. It was from an attorney in New York who said he heard we were looking for a baby to adopt, and he wanted to let us know that he had one available. What? Yeah, I don't know where the man got his information, but it certainly came as a shock. So what are you going to do? Nothing. We talked it over and decided against it and sent a telegram back to him telling him we weren't interested. Truly? Well, there was a little bravado in it, but uh, I think it's best we don't get involved in another situation like that, and Diana feels the same way. Well, you may be right, but that's got to be an awfully tough decision for you to make. Well, I won't pretend that it wasn't, especially for Diana, but I left the decision up to her, and it's the way she wants it. Are you sure that she wasn't just being... What, obliging? No, uh... I don't know what I meant to say exactly. No, I think I understand. You were... wondering if she was just putting up a front pretending not to want the baby because of me, huh? Yeah. No, no, it wasn't like that. She made up her own mind about it. Well, if... if that's the way she truly feels, that's fine. I'd certainly hate to see her get hurt again. So would I, Wes. I... I don't think either one of us could survive another disappointment like the one we had with Mike. No, I, I don't suppose that anyone could. But it still seems ironic that this is coming at a time when you both decided to give up the idea. Yes, it is, isn't it? Life seems to play a lot of practical jokes on people. Well, I think it's really remarkable that Diana was able to find the strength of character to do that. Goodness, I can just imagine what she must have gone through when you got that telegram. <laughs>
former associate of mine informs me you're interested in adopting a baby. If this is true, please contact the undersigned soonest. Have adorable baby for immediate adoption. Frank Wallace.